In this video, I would like to quickly address the topic of light portals. So you can see my very simple scene, but it's actually set up quite similar to our main tutorial scene. So we have this white environment light plus the sun lamp. And here in the window openings, I've added three area lamps. But if we inspect them a little bit closely, um, you can see they have this portal checker enabled here. And I've already rendered the scene, so let's compare the results. So within the slot number one, I have our scene without any area lamps in the windows. So the result is not bad, I would say. Let's now check the slot number two. And here you can see the scene becomes a little bit brighter. And in that example, we have the area lamps placed in the window openings, but they are not used as portals. And in the slot number three, we have them set up as you can see here. So they are set up as light portals. And then the power uh, we can set up here is basically useless because uh, the value of those lamps comes from the white environment. So I think if we compare the third slot with the first one, uh, we can clearly see the difference. The scene is much brighter and more natural. So I would suggest if you have um, scenarios like the one we have here, so multiple window openings, um, the composition is, well, similar to the one we have here. It's different to our main tutorial scene where we have the huge window opening and very nice uh, staircase plus the shadows on the left. Uh, unless you have a very specific scenario, I would suggest placing the area lamps in the window openings and using them either as portals, so you have this quite photorealistic effect, or at least using them as normal area lamps. So this will uh, strongly depend on your scene. You would probably have to test out both of the settings and see uh, which one of them looks uh, works best for you. I would say this setting is pretty good in terms of uh, the illumination, but I, I, I'm not sure if I like this overburned area here, which is actually not uh, an issue with this setup. So you can see we have a little bit more shadow on this highlight. And yeah, as I said, in slot two, I was using those area lamps, but the portal settings were disabled for them. So thanks for watching. A two very important and cool features were added to Blender 2.93. It's still in the alpha version when I'm recording this video, but regardless, you're going to be using those. I'm pretty sure about that. So the first one is the changes applied to the area lamp. I'm going to add one to my scene and just present what changed. So within the lamp settings, we can now change shapes, not only from between square and rectangle, but we also have a disc and the ellipse. And that's a very cool feature because just with the area lamp, we are now able to create kind of a spot lamp because as you can see, we have the beam shape feature added to the area lamp that wasn't present here before. So you can see I'm creating this very nice looking focused light source. When I change it to the ellipse, this light shape will also follow the ellipse shape. So let's modify it like this. Oops, that's definitely too much. But we are now able to create very interesting effects just with the area lamps only. Previously, you would have to create an object here, cut the ellipse shape and just put the area lamp, the square one or the rectangular one behind it. And now we are just able to do it with those settings here. Another thing that I would like to show uh, applies to the denoiser. So within the render settings here, and then at Noiser, we have the start sample value. So for example, if I set it to 30, you can see we get the very regular cyclist look at first, and then the denoiser kicks in once we reach the 30th sample here. So if I set it to 50, let's say, and refresh, you can see uh, we are counting the samples and, and as soon as we reach 50, the denoiser is applied. That's very useful because with the lower 
uh, when the denoiser kicks in from the very beginning, it already kind of distorts the image. And so let me set it up just to the two samples here. So you can see this is how it looks at the second sample. And at the first one, it looks like this. So this is the input for the denoiser to work on the other samples. And here, for example, you can see it distorts it, uh, the, the look of the image, it creates bugs. So it needs to continue until all those areas are cleaned up. And in the areas where we have tiny details, where those distortions happen, even at higher samples, uh, it's not possible to clean up those areas from those artifacts. So I think uh, right now, if we can start applying the denoiser, let's say from the 50th or 100th uh, sample, when the image is already quite clean, I would say, um, the end results should look much better because, as I mentioned, uh, Blender gets much cleaner image as a starting point and then it applies the denoiser. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.